Xander K. I'm in Nearest 12. This is Choose Wisely Gaming. How's it going, Xander K? Going pretty good, man. Going awesome. pretty good. Glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So, you are the Han Community Manager at S2, right? Yes, I am. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, when when did you uh, when were you appointed that position, and when did you get that job? Um, I got the job. Um, the I started first in November. Um, I knew I had the job starting uh, a little bit or a little bit earlier than that, maybe two weeks or so before before I knew that uh, I was definitely coming up here to Kalamazoo. Okay, so you did have to relocate um, to Kalamazoo after after you got the job. Yes, indeed, I did, um, and it's it's been it's been good though. It's been good. I actually uh, actually really like it up here. It's yeah. been. Uh, now, where it's were you before? Pretty nice. What state? Uh, good old New Jersey. Oh, really? Yes, oh. indeed. Good old New Jersey. So it's a bit like of a trek, but um, it's it's pretty good. Um, my fiance did come with me, so uh, wow. obviously that was the important thing. So uh, that's yeah, good. But um, besides that, it's I I really like working at S two, and uh, obviously there's a lot a lot of nice perks that come with working there, like getting to go to different places and just. Uh, you know, making my you know my job here as a new earth, which is uh, pretty awesome, I gotta yeah. say. So, like, uh, you got to go to NASL last week, and how was that? That was really cool. Um, also, partially because you know it's a it's a Han tournament, and uh, partially because I'm a big esports nerd to begin with, so <laughs> that helps. Um, I got to meet uh, Day Nine and DJ Wee and Idra and Very cool. um, all, all sorts of big StarCraft names. Uh, I talked to Mr. Bitter. Uh, Rotterdam. Uh, Rotterdam is actually, uh, he, if you didn't, if you didn't know this, he actually was one of the founding members of Fnatic MSI and Han. Really? And yeah, yeah. And he's a okay. big, big, big Han fan. Um, awesome. And he, I was talking to him, and he was like, "Man, I wish I could play Han. I wish I could play Han." Stuff. I'm like, "Well, why don't you?" He's like, "Man, if I start playing, I'm just not going to stop, and I'm going <laughs> to get screwed up on my StarCraft stuff." I'm like, "All right, that's a good enough reason for me." But uh, yeah. in addition to all them, you know, the players again, I did, I had seen. Um, all of them the week before at at DreamHack, obviously, since we pretty much came right from one to the other. But it was still cool to see them again, and uh, in the U.S. as well. A lot of the players, were, that was their first time in the U.S., so that was pretty cool. Awesome. So are you a StarCraft fan as well? I am. I am a fan of everything video game, competition, and <laughs> any of that. Like, I started out being a StarCraft fan, or a... Uh, Counter Strike fan in like 2002 or 2003. Oh, really? Something like that. Um, and I've been a fan of esports ever since. I used to write for Got Frag back in the day and yeah. um, did Painkiller, Quake 4, but StarCraft right now. And uh, obviously, here's a new earth. And the other big thing that I do is uh, uh, fighting games, anything fighting games. I'm a huge, huge fan of. Really? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite fighting game? Uh, at the moment, Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Very nice. I really, really like that game a lot. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was about to ask. Something about competitive gaming. Oh, um, yeah, you've always been big on the um, competitive scene for gaming. Are, are you still yeah. doing stuff with Honcast? Or? Um, it's not that I'm not doing stuff with Honcast. I mean, I'm no longer an official member, obviously, since I work okay. for S2. But um, it's more of a matter of how much time I have. And, right. you know, honestly, Phil and Breaky kind of have it have it on lockdown. And, you know, with Suns Fan and uh, Xenocide and all the GLHF guys kind of yeah. lending a hand as well, it's, it's, you know, I don't need to be on as much. But I'm still still going to be on for the podcast and such just because not only do I like to be involved, but also I think that having the having the community manager on a, on a show like that is good. Just It, it, it gives me another platform to put out information right. and, uh, you know, Oh, people know me there too, so it helps. Right, and then there's also the um, the mobile weekly that you do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so tell me, as the Han community manager, what exactly are you in charge of? What is your job over at S2? Um, well, I like to say managing the community, but right. um, it's uh, <laughs> it's a bit more complicated than that, obviously. Um, the the gist of my job is to be the liaison between the company and the community and vice versa. So it's my job to, uh, you know, let the community know what the company is up to, what we're uh, doing, and kind of the reasons for what we're doing. And in addition, you know, in reverse as well. So what the community wants, 
things like that. So I've been doing a lot of things like uh, the Ask Us Two forum, so that people can be people can be a little bit more. Um, uh, sorry, phone's ringing. Um, people can be a little bit more involved with uh, the company and know more about what's going on, um, which is certainly good. Um, but you know, my job extends past that. I think the the one thing that is uh, best describes what what I what I do at at S2 and what I will be doing at S2 because I've really only been working there for a little while is that I'm uh, it's my job to make sure that everyone that plays Han wants to keep playing Han and that everyone that does not play Han wants to come and try Han so it's to grow the community in every way possible is what my job is very nice so what, what kind of challenges are there with that well the main thing is that um, there's never been a completely full time uh community manager before me. Um, obviously, Nigma was in the position before, but he was really more of a part-time thing, not only because he lives in Germany, but, you know, he, he has other stuff that other stuff to do over there. And, uh, you know, while he did a great job, uh, S2 really wanted to go, you know, in a more full-time direction. Okay. And the thing about that is that since there's never been one before me, it's hard for me to, you know, I kind of need to figure out the position for myself. It's not like I have a... Uh, Oh, uh, someone to look back at and say, okay, yeah, he did it this way, so I need to be, I should follow in that and add my own thing. So it's really kind of an open position for me. Um, and it basically requires me doing a lot of, uh, a lot of looking around and research, trying to figure out what, you know, other companies have done uh, with this position and what, uh, what I can bring to it for Heroes of New Earth. And, you know, it's, it's good in that way, but it's also a challenge because it's, it's, you know, something I need to be focusing on at all times. So, as a community manager, what, what is your overall opinion of the Han community? Um, I think, well, what do you mean, of the Han community? Well, personally, I think the Han community is horrible. They're a bunch of uh, ungrateful trolls and stuff like that. <laughs> that. That's actually why we started doing this cast, was try to uh, uh -huh. bear the community, try to get some more sportsmanship in play, and reduce the trolling of the community. I think it's not that the that the community is is a bad community. It's that the people that you see tend to be a little bit more negative because a lot of the times, uh, uh, what happens is is that the people that are most vocal also tend to be the most negative. Um, if you also if you take some of the people that were not vocal previously or were a little bit quieter and say, hey, you know, you should be more involved or why don't you come and do this like what you guys are doing uh, with with uh, with Choose Wisely. The community just gets better and better. Like my point is, is I feel like that the community just needs a push in the right direction to say, like, look, you don't need to be a troll. You don't need to, you know, badmouth everyone. You can just go have a good time, help other people, and still enjoy this game. I mean, obviously, it's a competitive game, so in the long run, it's, you know, people are gonna, people are gonna yell at each other. People are gonna be really competitive and want to win. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you need to know where to where to draw the line and how to how to you know react and how to handle yourself in situations like that right. because that's what the that's what the problem really has been and I'm trying to do stuff like that trying to kind of put forth a positive attitude and really that's uh, I mean I w I've always been a positive person so just because I'm in this position doesn't mean I'm suddenly becoming a positive guy but I feel like that by bringing that to uh to the position is very helpful as well right and actually I saw on the forums um yesterday a lot of um Thank you, Xander K. Things. Um, we're on the street. Is actually you. People were complaining about the up price of the um, early access of Shadowblade, and they're saying you talk to uh, people at the office or whatever. But whether or not that price will be changed in the future, or other EA heroes are going to be the same price or cheaper or more, I, I saw a lot of people appreciating that you were at least talking to your uh, coworkers about the price and stuff like that. Well, I mean that's my job, but right. I mean I want to I want to deflect that a little bit because it was my mistake in the begin in the beginning that caused a little bit of a problem. Um, oh. That yeah, the uh, at the very beginning it was like seven a.m. and I I put forth that the main reason why the the price was higher was because of the uh, the addition of the icon, and that's just not true. The icon was just another thing they put into the into the package. The reason why the the price was higher is because of the high quality of this hero and this model. Yeah, there's uh, including the there's eight models. Eight. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. 
right. this uh, this this hero, and I I love the old Avatar as well for sure. I like it too. So I mean that's that's the reason why, but I I didn't communicate that uh, as well as I could have. Um, I I take responsibility for that. I was not in the office when I said that, so it was uh, not necessarily the correct information but um I, i'm not sure about the future though obviously that's not my decision but I, I i will do my best to keep you guys as informed as possible yeah. um on things like that personally i i really didn't care the um the price was a little higher i i realized hey there's a lot of work in this guy with all the different character models but um i think Even it was good that you uh stuck up for the community and at least inquired about it well i mean that's my job i mean yeah. the thing is is that it's my job to find out to Learn to figure out what why things are, and then you know let the community know what the what the S two answer is because in the past S two hasn't you know it's it's been harder for them to do you know their jobs as well as be as informative as maybe the co the community wants and that's why I'm here in the long run to uh, to help mend that and make the community and the you know uh, make the community realize the kind of work that S two puts in and they really are a hard hard working group of guys they're a great group of guys and they really just want their game to succeed and you guys to enjoy playing the game which is in in, in the long run is is the most important thing right. um, but yeah you know. So speaking of uh, Shadow Blade and stuff, how how do you like that hero? I think he's uh, I think he's pretty cool. Um, he's he's very unique in the way that he can kind of be played in a lot of different ways. I mean, obviously he's going to be played as a as a hard carry most of the time, but um, I think it's obviously as always a little a little early to to be a hundred percent on you know how I completely feel about him. But so far I like him. I need to play more with him to be honest. I play a couple games with him. I really like him. He's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a fun hero. It seems like everyone has a really positive um, feel to him as well. Everyone seems to like him a lot. Um, obviously, you know, there's going to be the the group of uh, group of people that says, "Oh, he's broken. He's hardly broken." But it doesn't matter what hero you release; it's right. still going to be that. Or the other group of people that's going to say, "Oh, he's too good. He can do everything." But you know, like. Basically, what those people want. The joke is, is that the what those people want is a uh, is a hero that just auto attacks. But yeah, well, that's boring. I mean, my opinion. I know it's boring. Uh, I, like it's there's so much there's so much stuff that uh, there's so much stuff that you know is in the game that is gonna be good. You need it to be good. You can't have it be like terrible when it comes out. That's the long and the short of it. Out of curiosity, how, what's your yeah. reaction when people are always like, "Oh, as two, all as two heroes are overpowered." How's your <laughs> reaction to that? Uh, it's uh, it's funny. It's funny to me because I mean, people are people are blinded by the fact that you know of pub games and things like that. I mean, if you look at the competitive scene, like I think it's seventy percent is Dota ports. Yeah, it's something like that. Um, or Dota inspired heroes. So you know the teams have picked up some of the uh, some of the S two created heroes as well. But even then, you know a lot of them aren't as like ridiculous as some other ones. Right. Personally, I mean it's it's I, just a matter. Yeah. Personally, I don't I don't believe that at all. I mean there has been a lot of uh, S two heroes that were actually pretty underpowered. Um, For sure. When first released, like Drunken Master and Monkey King, nobody picked them up. Well, well, Monkey King has always been ridiculous. Well, he, but, uh, he got a lot stronger since his uh, ultimate was always a passive activate. Um, but when when he first came out, I I didn't see him for a little while. And well, he had that com he had the combo that was uh, well, kind of yeah. But it um, took people a little he, while to I get mean, that out. <laughs> yeah, like and even Emerald Warden, who everyone complains about, is really and you look at the competitive scene. People have started to pick up Emerald Warden, and she's just she just doesn't do very well. Not not even at all. Yeah. And I think that that ties to what her skills are, and what um, basically the ways that a competitive player can deal with can deal with her is different than what a pub player would do. Because she her, her obviously most powerful ability is her ultimate. But the thing is, is that she's so ridiculously squishy in the early game that if you just deal with her, then she's not really a problem as you get on. And if there's one problem that pubs have is they allow people to farm maybe a little bit too much. So that's why you run into situations where Emerald Warden can blow you up instantaneously between the bird and the silencing shot. Um, honestly, the only thing I would say maybe could 
be a little used for a change and maybe the silence could be a little shorter but for the most part i i mean i think that hero is pretty much okay as well so do um, I. I thought uh, Emma Warren was a little overpowered at first, but then I realized how squishy that hero is and mm -hmm. how easily they are to deal with if you just stop them from getting farm and getting those tanky items. Yeah, all she really has is the one is the slow with the dogs, and you know overgrowth is good, but you, it's pretty obvious where she's going to put it, so that's not that big of a deal. Right. So, I, yeah, I mean it's it's just a matter of being aware, and that's uh, pub. When you play in a pub, you're not looking to be aware; you're looking to just have a good time and. Well, I mean, at least, hopefully, people are having a good time. Yeah, well, they certainly are, so that's good. Yeah. Um, I have a good question for you. The yeah. uh, new reporter player, or mm -hmm. poor abusive behavior function, did you have any hand in designing that? I did not, no. That is uh, that is everyone else, and, you know, shout-outs to Phoenix for, for that. He's uh, the guy that heads up all the support stuff over at S2, and he... Uh, he does a really great job. He's really dedicated to what he does, and very helpful in terms of uh, when I when I have to pop into his office and say, "Hey, hey, can we? Uh, what's up with this?" And uh, yeah, so he's been really good. But the reporter player, I'm actually really pleased with the changes that they made. I love the I love the little troll with having unreportable offenses listed, so that when you click them, it says you can't report this. Because I think because. And I know that Phoenix was talking about releasing a lot, releasing some statistics about a uh, reporter player. I don't know if he has yet, but okay. there like it it has made a pretty sizable difference in the number of uh, in the number of reports and the number of negative reports because like he was telling me the other day that they used to get like I think it was near two thousand reports a day. Wow. And they'd only be able to get through like you know a certain number of them just because of the sheer number. And most of them are not real, are not you know reportable offenses. People would report for anything, so that was that was a big problem, and it you know wasted a lot of time. But with this, they're slowly seeing not only less reports, but also more reports that are actually legitimate, which is good. Yeah. Um, and there's been a lot of measures put in to make sure that when people are reporting something. They actually are reporting something that not only is reportable, but is is some is like an actual is an actual offense that someone could get banned for. So, right. that's good. So, do you do you think that this um, reduced the trolling or bad sportsmanship in the community at all? The new reporter player. Um, I think it's a good tool for that, but I really think it's just it's just to streamline this the situation because sometimes because you know. It's hard to be able to police such a large community, and you want to make it as easy as possible. Um, I think that the reduction in the in the the level of trolls and things like that is more going to come down to just kind of a time related thing of just, okay. uh, like I said, a more positive attitude. Things like that is is and being more informative is going to be real positive as well. All right. So, your ideal view of um, <laughs> the community. What what would you like to see if the con community was as perfect as you would have liked it. What's your envision your vision of that? I mean, I don't have a I don't have an ideal view per se of it. I just I want people to. I mean, I don't want to say behave themselves, but I just want people to behave themselves and enjoy the game. That's the that's the long and the short of it. I want people to enjoy the game, however that happens to be. As long as it's not you know sometimes how the way it is, um, that's fine with me. Like the for example, like. I was talking to, to Mood Meander at NASL. Obviously, he's known for being one of the biggest trolls. And he was, you know, asking me about, like, the type of, like, bands and stuff like that. And I'm like, look, Mood, it's not the dancing that causes the problem. It's not spam. It's not G-spam that causes the problem. It's everything that you do over that line. Because it's funny when you when you dance and, you know, you say, ha-ha, I'm winning. And you spam Gs and stuff, you know, a couple times. That's fine because that's part of the game. It's a competitive game. It's fun to be, you know you know, winning. It's fun to win, but it's not fun when you cross that line and you go and you start doing other things where you're, you know, spamming all the whole game and and calling people, you know, names and being racist and things like that. Like, that's over the line. It's just kind of like using your head and just playing the game because it's fun. Right. To be totally honest, when, when we're uh, streaming, if we someone spamming, we, if we see someone spam G's, we warn them once, if they do it again, we don't let them, we don't allow them back on the stream. <laughs> we hate that. <laughs> Now, spamming. The thing is, is that like, it's it's in in small doses. It's just 
trash talk. That's all it is. It's yeah. just a form of trash talk. And I really don't have a problem with that, like I said, because it's a competitive game. It's, you just have to keep it to a limit, that's all. Yeah. Okay, so, um... I want to talk about the uh, patch a little bit with you. Sure. How, how do you like the um, changes to the matchmaking? I think the matchmaking changes, um, as with all matchmaking changes, are going to be the effect of them is going to be seen over time, not right now. Um, the thing about right now is that it's going to be going to seem like a negative change initially, just because with a compression you're going to see a larger number of players below you that are now available to be matched with you. But as the uh, as the games go on, they're going to uh, you're going to find people that settle in more with what their actual rating is, and that was the point of this. That's one of the points of this uh, of this rework is to get a more accurate description of pl of player ranking, and to also at the same time eliminate the smurfing problem or at least lessen it. And I think that in the long run, that's what will get accomplished. Now you said smurfing problem. How, yes. You well, what's your view on smurfing? I mean, I think it's I think it's fine. It's just that the problem with smurfing is that people are is that it ruins the game for a lower level player. It doesn't ruin, but it has the potential to ruin a game for a lower level player because they come in and get ri ridiculously destroyed, <laughs> and then it's hard for them to want to keep playing. But you know, the thing is, is that players that are good have every right to make another account. That's the point. You know, you're supposed to enjoy the game, and you know, if you, if that involves making a new account, then so be it. Um, so I obviously don't want them to stop doing that, but I think that having basically the idea here is that to create an atmosphere where a Smurf account will will mostly play against Smurf accounts and move up quicker. So that they can still enjoy the time that they're playing against, you know, getting really quick games and things like that, but also have a better matchup and not have to deal with, you know, not stomp noobs for like the entire time they're doing it. But the other thing we're doing in addition is making it a lot easier for a higher level, higher PSR account, higher MMR account to find games. So once they uh, once they realize that, it's going to be also a lot easier for them to just go and play on their regular account and get games against, you know, good competition, which really is the thing. It's not that they didn't want to play on those accounts, it's that they wanted to get games and the queues were really long for those accounts. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing in the patch is we saw well, the um, 2.5 patch, we saw spectating and mentoring. Do you think, do you think that's yeah. going to help people that have kind of fallen off the learning curve, or...? Mentoring is amazing for a multiple uh, multiple reasons. Obviously, spectating is really cool just because you know when you're done with a game and your friends at a game and you're like, hey, we should uh, we should play after this, and he's like, yeah, just a second. It's nice and easy to just jump in and watch him, and it you know gives you something to do. You can still talk to him about the game and such. But mentoring's great because we are the only game in this genre that has that system in. Um, no other game has uh, has the ability to go in and say and, and teach. And I think that's one that's a great thing, just because this genre might be one of the hardest genres of games to get into and to learn, um, just because of the massive amount of information that is kind of required to do it. Yeah. Um, so I think that having that is going to be a really big step forward for us, and it's going to be nice not only for us but for pro players as well, um, since they can now kind of give lessons, which is really cool. That is cool. Um, and I like that a lot as well. Yeah, I hadn't thought about the uh, pro players teaching others. A lot of people haven't, but it's it's pretty cool. It's that, that's one of the one of the ways that StarCraft players make a make a uh, you know a decent amount of money just being able to just go and right. give lessons, and it's pretty easy in StarCraft. But in yeah, uh, like Destiny started coaching. Exactly, like coaching has been a big thing, but it's more difficult in this game because if you're in the game with someone, then it kind of makes it hard. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you can't focus with what they're doing if you're in the game and what you're, doing. what you're doing. Exactly. So yeah. we really like the we really like the mentoring system and what measures we put in allows for people to, you know, really be able to teach, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I wish we had some of these features when I was when I first started playing, like the uh, oh yeah, the hero sure. guides and the mentoring stuff, because I was horrible. I think we all were pretty bad. I remember. I think my first hero was like Pyromancer or something, and I just, that's not a good, that's not really a great hero to oh, use no, the first time. Really not. Um, 
I mean, this was like like early, early, early closed beta, so like I just was not very good. It was very frustrating to start with, but once I kind of find my found my role, I've gotten a lot better, so that's good. Right. Um, yeah, the fir- first game I played, um, I think it was Soul Reaper, and I, I played the old matchmaking system, you know, back in uh, beta, and the the guys that were with me, they they were actually really really good guys. They were telling me, okay. We realize you're new. Let me help you. You need to. Th- this is where you can find the wards in the shop. Mm-hmm. We need you to place those here, here, and keep those up. Yep. And I, I don't think I've ever really had a game since then that the the people have then been that accepting of a new player. Uh huh. And I kind of miss that. Um, I, here on the stream, we're we're kind of trying to bring back the love to those newer players, kind of bring the love to the uh, the pub scene, make them feel welcome. and Take them in. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. And that's definitely a really good thing. And I, I really appreciate you guys taking that initiative because, you know, the new players are, are going to be the, the next player, the next group of people that are going to play the game hardcore. It's the, the today's 1500s are tomorrow's 1900s, you know, like once they uh, learn the game and such. Right. Um. So, talking about the patch a little more, what do you think of those new items, the um, Grave Locket and Genjuro? I think Grave Locket is uh, Grave Locket's effect is going to be seen once it once it gets used a little bit more. Um, the what it does is is really cool, just because it you know obviously reduces the cool da- reduces your death timer which is awesome and it also encourages you to be involved in fights and uh, if you die then you come back a little bit sooner which i really like um so it's going to be really good on on those support heroes that are able to get in and get an assist but then also get a little bit of a buff to themselves as well so it rewards you for battling which is good um Genjuro, I just think is a fun item to use. <laughs> it's it's just funny to just jump in and you can just do so much damage so fast with it. Um, the question is is what heroes you get it on, and then consequently, who pick you know how it gets used in competitive games. Um, I think that as far as like a you know in a public setting, um, it's good for heroes like Flint Beastwood, um, Arachna will will destroy people with that item. <laughs> They decide to get it. Um, so the way that the way that I've heard put it is that Gendro will be good on heroes that didn't normally get Shroud, but can make use of the additional agility. Um, so like like Flint, for example, who could have gotten Shroud, and it you know works on Flint, but it was no mean a no by no means a uh, you know a core item on him. Right. But now you can get it because now you can also get the agility to get the item, the the burst as well. Right, yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people, actually, I've been seeing in the forums, didn't really know where Gravelock it... What, what kind of hero should get him? Um, yeah. Well, the other thing about Gravelock it is that its role is going to be expanded in the future. Oh, is uh, it? I can't say much more about it, but okay. <laughs> it, uh, that is just the beginning, that item. So uh, look forward to more cool stuff coming from that item, specifically. Speaking of which, do you have any, can you give us any kind of ETA on when that expansion might come? Uh, no, I don't okay. know. I know it's being tested. I don't know what. Uh, All right, that's fine. I don't know when it'll come out. There's a lot of stuff. Obviously, you know, we're always testing new things. Of course. Um, like something that I have put out that I know that is out there is a Vindicator rework is coming as well. Yeah, a lot so of that- people have been talking about that on the forums and stuff. For sure, and it's definitely a hero that needs one while he is effective in his current role um i think he i think he he's he's just kind of a weird hero i don't feel like he fits in certain in in, in a lot of ways and uh him getting his rework i've seen what they're doing with it and i like it so i think that he'll be a lot better afterwards the the one thing i've comforted people with is that his ultimate is the same in the rework so don't get worried because i know his ultimate is obviously his best skill yeah honestly i like vindicator um the only problem I have with him is he's a little too squishy. A lot of yeah. Time, but what, what do you think the the problem with that hero is? Um, that certainly, but it's his his nuke kind of tapers as the game goes on. Yeah. Comes a little bit less useful. I mean, obviously it demolishes people in lane, and I think maybe it's a little bit too good in lane. But 
um, the way that they're changing it makes it not only more useful later game, but also um, also keeps its kind of usefulness at the beginning. Okay, yeah. Um, mm. Someone was ask actually asking me on the uh, chat, do you, is S2 aware of the, um, the problem with Max and crashing... Absolutely. Okay, they are aware of that. We're we're very very well aware of the Mac problems. Um, it's it's unfortunate, and DJ has actually addressed this in the past on uh, I believe Reddit. Um, we're very well aware of the problems that are happening with Mac, but the thing is, is that, and I don't. I mean, I want to say this in the nicest way possible: is that our community is like less than five percent Mac, so. Unfortunately, sometimes the things like that get put onto the back burner, and it's not a it's not a negative thing about Mac because we have been working on it the entire time. But it's hard. Um, it's 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 not only that they're they're weird fixes, but it's also that it's 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 hard to it's hard to find the time to put them put you know the people on them when we're doing so much other stuff. So I mean, they will get fixed. I know, for example, that there is a potential fix for the sound bug coming down the pipeline soon but i don't want to put like the thing is the other thing about it with like especially with the sound bug is i don't want to i don't want to say oh yeah we have a fix coming and then say for example it doesn't work and then people are going to be more mad because i said that you know we have a fix coming but you know we'll see what happens with this one and i know people are really anxious about that and i feel bad you know i do i, I want to address it i want to come out and say oh no we know we know we know we're, we're working on it we're working on it it's just that i don't want to say we're working on it for four weeks straight because we are but it's it's just i don't know it's 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 weird and actually i didn't even know there was a sound bug the sound bug's been uh, that way for like five weeks or oh, something. The only bug I know oh. about for Max is um, people have been saying that when a... The crash with 2.5. Right, something with the spectators or mentors or something. Bad snapshot, I believe is what it was. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. It, I mean, all of those things were, will get fixed, no question. It's it just, just takes time. a matter of time, exactly. Okay. Well, that answers the question that someone was asking about in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you how do you like the new skins on the creeps? I want to know your opinion on that. I think they look awesome. I can see how some people would have a problem with them. Um, and what, what the one thing have you been hearing. The one thing that someone brought up is uh, colorblind people mm. have an issue with it, which I can see. But um, honestly, I mean, you know, those those issues aside, I think that the creeps are really really great. I think they look awesome. I love the um, the super creeps, the creeps that pop out after you knock down yeah. a lane. Those they look sweet. so sick. And the catapults are really cool as well. So I, I, I mean I'm pleased with the, I'm really pleased with them. I just think maybe a a small color tweak might might be good. But I again I have no control over that but Yeah, I love the um, the heavy ballistas. The little mm -hmm. the monkeys carrying around. I think they're so cool. Yep. Um what about the trees? Um, was there, do you know if there's a specific reason why the trees were changed? I don't know. Um, the trees were changed, obviously, before I got there. Um, oh, so, they? like, the trees were done. Yeah, I mean, if you recall the leak that was, like, supposed to be 3.0, um, the trees were in that leak. People could, you could see the trees. So the trees were done. We were just kind of, they were kind of being, like, you know, we're supposed to be in a big patch, and 2.5 ended up being that big patch. So the trees were done. I don't know why the trees got changed. I mean, I like the trees a lot. I especially like the Hellborn trees, actually. I think they look really cool. Yeah. Um, but I don't think there's a... I don't know if there's, like, a specific reason. You'd have to ask uh, right. one of the develop one of the uh, designers more for that. Okay. Um, and you mentioned a video. I, I think it was the Lorisol Force video. Mm -hmm. That showed a lot of the new stuff. In that video, they actually had different health bars on the, uh, on everything. Do you know if that's something that's up and coming, or is that something that was scrapped? I don't know. Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff like that is changes all the time. So we'll see. Right. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Bangers. Hmm? Bangers says in the in the chat. It says in the next couple of weeks there will be a red, green, blue, yellow solid health bar option. Oh, that's so cool. that's awesome. I did not know that. Thank you, bangers. Um, but you know, stuff like that. I mean, if you have a problem with stuff like that, by the way, just you know, voice it, and I either I'll see it or someone else will see it and bring it up to 
to one of the uh, one of the high level guys, and we can talk about it. I mean, I've I've already done that with a couple of things, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about any further health bar changes other than what Bangers just said. Um, someone in the chat is asking, do you know what do you think of Sulforus? Do you think he's overpowered or underpowered? Sulforus, I think, has one of the best ultimates in the game. Um, that thing just destroys people. The first game I played with him, I was on the team I was against had a Dampier, and that Dampier did nothing in fights. <laughs> great. Such a fun hero. Um, I don't know. I really have not seen a lot of negative feedback about self Horus. Usually, in general, if you see some people say that he's overpowered and some people say that he's underpowered, usually it falls in the middle. So I think he's okay right now. I haven't seen anything that makes me feel that he's like totally broken, but we'll see. Um. Yeah, personally, I, I I've only seen a very few games where he's actually really dominated so my hmm. overall opinion of him is he's kind of on the weak side but that's just me yeah i think i think he's okay i mean obviously a lot of the times heroes like this you'll find out how how good they are based on the time you know the length of time that they're played so i would assume that that's probably going to be the same right um oh i had a question for you my mind totally just blanked um. Okay, I'll take a look at the chat here. Someone's asking, "What do you think of the uh, current meta game?" Because it's very um, kind of push oriented. What, what do you think about that? Do you like it or? I think the the grave locket helps with that. Um, Nigma brought this up actually in his patch video. Go watch that if you haven't. Um, that having the grave locket is good because then the support heroes that die in fights are going to come up earlier, so it's gonna kill the push off a little bit. But, um. As, I feel like as long as the game is not completely farm-oriented, I'm happy. Um, I think that there always should be a position where you can, you know, sit back and farm. But I think anytime there's an active metagame, I'm, I'm a pretty happy guy. So I, I feel like the game is pretty exciting and active right now, so that's good. Yeah, it is. Um, a lot of times, um, the games that we've cast on the stream here, we'll, we'll have something like, I don't know, 20 kills in 10, 15 minutes. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but it's entertaining. I love it. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. I mean, in general, and this is something we've always said on Honcast, is that if the number of kills is the same or higher than the number of, than the minute mark, it's good. That's what we want. And I, 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 I think, you know, personally, I think that that's a good thing. You want it to be similar. Okay. Very nice. Well, I'm actually out of questions. Um, is there anything that you wanted to ask me or anything, or...? Um, no, nothing specific. Nope. I'm just just glad that I could come on and, and talk to you yeah, and any, any you. time. Thank you so much for um, coming on the stream. It means so much to us. Um, oh, no problem. No problem. All right, well, um, I'm Anirus12, and joining me was Xander K. Thank you uh, so much for jumping on the stream and having this little chat for, with me. Oh, no problem, man. All right, take care, man.